This morning we're waking up to frost all over everything. So the temperature's definitely getting down below 32 last night. I think it's time to winterize the trailer. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, in anticipation of beginning to winterize the trailer, I uh, came down here and right underneath here, right there, that bib right there in this cap, I uh, took the cap off and this is where our fresh water tank is on the trailer. So it drained all the water out. Uh, fresh water tanks across the back of the trailer here. And then came over here and there are low water drains underneath the trailer. Uh, those two bibs right there, one of them's hot water line, the red is hot water line and the blue is cold water line. <coughs> so I take those caps off and open up faucets inside the trailer. Uh, so water and all the, wa all the water lines inside uh, get sucked out down through this uh, low water drain. And then, this is our hot water heater. Or, uh, yeah, so I'm not being redundant. It's, it's actually the water heater. <laughs> Everybody always calls it a hot water heater, but it's, it's actually the uh, water heater. And I opened up this anode. Uh, this heater has a sacrificial uh, metal. I think that's like a, I don't know, some, some sort of a metal that... Uh, uh, gets attacked on minerals and stuff that are in the water uh, so that the tank of the uh, water heater uh, doesn't rust. And so the elements and stuff attack this instead of the tank and it, it saves the tank on your on your water heater. So I pull that out and all the water that's in the water heater drains out. The other things I have to do on uh, pertaining to this water heater, uh, I'm going to pump antifreeze through the lines in the trailer and I don't want that antifreeze to end up in the hot water heater or the water heater. <laughs> See, I can't even stop doing it. The water heater. So I've got to clear some stuff out so that I can get down around there and uh, activate or switch the valves over uh, for the water heater bypass. So when I pump uh, the Freon in, then that Freon uh, will not go into the water heater. <laughs> Okay, put a little bit of light on the subject. That valve right there, right here, is the bypass. So water is coming from here down to here, and normally it would run, normally it would run through this valve and into the hot water heater. And then the hot water comes out here and then goes into the system. 
Uh, I've turned this valve, the handle on this, you can see is now pointing up. So now the water would come here, come up here, and then go back into the system. Uh, I'm not sure why. Normally what you would see is two valves. You would have two valves, you know, like a valve here and a valve here. And I don't know why water doesn't come back this way and enter uh, into the water heater. But it doesn't. Uh, I've, I've winterized this before and it, uh, it effectively bypasses. So I don't know if there's a check valve, you know, up in here that prevents the water from back flowing or not, but, uh, but it just has the one valve and I switch that over. And then when I pump Freon through the lines, the, uh, Freon, uh, then, um, uh, winterizes all of the, winterizes the pump right here and all the water lines throughout the trailer. Uh, this is that PEX pipe. This is what I'm going to use, uh, in the bus uh, when I as I start uh, plumbing uh, for the shower and sinks and and stuff like that This is the RV antifreeze that, that uh, I picked up. Uh, it's by Camco. It's a uh, antifreeze that's specifically designed for water systems, fresh water systems. And supposedly, it will do a burst protection down to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And ooh, look. It's a full timer's choice. So I have a uh, my low tech version of pumping this uh, antifreeze into the trailer. Uh, so I have a manual pump, hand pump that's set up, and it's it's uh, set up to pull the antifreeze down below. And then it comes over here to the city water intake. And so now I can go in the trailer and open up a faucet. And I want to start with the faucet that's the furthest away from this connection. And that's going to be the faucet in the, uh, in the kitchen. So we close up all of the drains that are closest to the pump. So we got those turned off. The toilet is okay the way it is. And we have the bathroom sink turned off. So now we'll go pump some uh, Freon or some uh, antifreeze until we get antifreeze here. I'm going to have to tighten that up. Alright, so initially we want to catch that so we can see how much, but then we will uh, open that drain and let it flow down into the trap, the P-trap underneath the sink, and that will protect that. Uh-oh, forgot one thing. Forgot to close these low water drains.
my antifreeze started coming out the bottom. Now I put the cap back on our fresh water tank. I don't expect any water to come back here. Oh, oh for heck's sakes. <laughs> I need to do it with my other hand. Still no joy yet. it dripping out of the faucet so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cold off that was the cold water well that was the hot water so now we'll turn the cold on and look we got antifreeze in the cold already but we'll we'll pump a little bit more just to make sure a little bit that ran out of the faucet when i turned the hot off and turned the cold on that was really just the antifreeze that was up in the uh, faucet. So now we're gonna pump some uh, to fill the cold water line that runs to that sink. Yep, and we got a couple of drips coming out of the faucet. Got a little bit more in the drain. Uh, one other thing that we don't wanna forget is this little device too. So do you remember as you were, when you were a kid how you'd take the dish sprayer and put a rubber band on it and then when mom would come to the sink, turn the water on, it would spray her. Oh man, I remember that. Yeah, good time was had by all. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little zip tie on here to hold that trigger down. And I'm going to put this over the other sink. Of course, I'll be able to see. I'll be able to see antifreeze in the in the line once I once I uh, pump it up. But we'll go give it a couple pumps and fill that line. Okay, what I had to do is turn the valve off and pump it up with some pressure and then basically hold my thumb over the end of the faucet here and now you see there's pink, pink antifreeze in the line. So now what we can do is we can clip this off. Let's see if I can pull this off uh, yeah, everything's fine I'll, I'll clip that off in a little bit uh, now we move on to the bathroom faucets I always want to catch this antifreeze so I kind of have an idea how much is coming through so I close up all the drains this is the hot water side 
we get a little bit of air come out and we get a little bit of antifreeze but we'll uh, we'll pump some more okay we got good good red color coming out of there and we got to pump some more Looks like we got antifreeze out of that. Now we move on to the shower. Now the shower, that's the faucet there. And this is the shower head. And so to let gravity work for me, I'm just going to drop that shower head down below. And we're going to want to see antifreeze come out of that. So we'll start with the hot. Turn the hot on. Chase as much water. We make sure that this valve here is open. And we'll go pump some antifreeze there. See, we got a little bit of antifreeze in the bottom, but it's definitely in the hose. So we'll shut off the hot. Now we come over to the cold. Okay, we'll give a couple of pumps there. Looks like we got antifreeze there. Lastly, we have the toilet, the throne, the old commode. And fortunately, what I have installed here is a bidet. So that allows us then to uh, run water through the toilet without holding the foot pedal down. So we'll turn the bidet over to nozzle clean and I'll go give it a couple of pumps on the on the uh, bottle and uh, we should see antifreeze come out of that. And there you have it. So what we've done by chasing water all the way from the furthest point, so where we put the uh, line coming into the trailer, we ran all the way to the sink, which is the furthest point. We bypassed the hot water heater. We've drained the hot water heater. And now we've run water through the hot and the cold in the sink, the shower, and the toilet. Now there was a reason that I was kind of catching all this water other than having the ability to see how much is actually uh, collecting. Now I can open this drain and let that flow down in there. And that will flow into the P-trap. The P trap right there on the sink, and that will protect that. The toilet, I can flush it, and that antifreeze goes down into the black tank, and that 
uh, will protect the antifreeze will go down to where the gate valve is for emptying the uh, black tank so that will help protect that and we have some water in the in the sink and the uh, shower uh, same thing there we can see that we've got pink water in our shower line so that's protected uh, the other thing, the only other thing that we need to do to make sure that we are winterized is to look through all of your cabinets and stuff for anything that could freeze. Uh, all of this stuff I think is all pretty good. We have some uh, shampoos up there that are going to be all right. Uh, the toilet is now okay. The sink, you can see we've got antifreeze and the spray nozzle. We need to cut that off. And go through our little pantry here and just make sure that there's nothing in here. I may take that uh, tuna fish into the house. But make sure there's nothing in there that will freeze and break. And then our refrigerator is shut off. And we have these little clips uh, on the refrigerator to keep the door just slightly ajar. That keeps that refrigerator from getting musty smelling. And lastly, one thing to make sure you don't forget, if your trailer or RV has a, an outside shower or an outside faucet, Make sure to include it when you do your winterization. This is how much antifreeze I have left. So now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to split this evenly between the black tank and the um, gray water tank. And again, that protects these valves, these gate valves. These gate valves down here, these, uh, I've got gate valves that are up here. Um, and so that water pools down down close to those gate valves and it protects them from freezing so that's all it takes to uh, winterize an rv and so now this trailer i can uh i had been running heaters in the trailer to keep uh water lines and stuff from freezing we've had a couple of days last couple of days that uh, <clears throat> were down below uh, freezing, but it wasn't a hard freeze, uh, just barely down to 32. Um, and so now I can turn the heaters off. Uh, I can close up all these slide ups and this trailer will be buttoned up and waiting for spring. Some around about April, we'll be at it again. Hopefully, if I get enough work done on the bus, We'll be able to take the bus out a couple of trips. One last thing I'll say about this process. Uh, you can buy these pumps, these manual pumps, for a little and nothing. I think I paid like $12 or something like this through Camping World. And they work okay. You can get the job done, as you've just seen. But sometimes, you know, as, as the old saying goes, you got to work smarter, not harder. Uh, and I said this last year when I winterized the trailer. This pump uh, I've set in my garage throughout the year. Uh, last year, all of these hose pieces, this hose piece, were all nice and supple. They were kind of easy to work with. I did have to put a couple of hose clamps on to keep the antifreeze from flowing out and the hoses from popping off and stuff like that. But if I was, and I said this last year, and, uh, and I'm going to say it again this year, if I took a regular pump, or even my pump in this trailer, and I rigged myself up a quick connect uh, hose, like a piece of hose like this, uh, then I could turn the pump on and just pump this Freon through the system. That would be... That would make this literally a five minute job. Now, I've been out here for about an hour, running back and forth, I pump a couple times, I run to the drain, I check it, I come back, pump a couple more times, you know, move on to the next thing. 
and it's kind of tedious and and it can be done but it's uh it can be kind of frustrating too uh, but if i was to rig up an electric pump either external that that i could just sit out here just like this pump it right into the city water connection like that uh, let the pump pressurize the system and then just go around and turn faucets on until I see red um, Then that would be a much easier job. I said it last year and I'm saying it again this year Hopefully next year when I go to winterize this trailer uh, That uh, I'll have something a little bit uh, easier to work with Thanks for watching. I appreciate it uh, like and subscribe on this video if you like to see what I'm doing uh, as you've seen in my past videos I've got some bus build stuff that I'm working on and I've got this trailer uh, we go camping we videotape our, our camping exposés and we also have a new addition to the channel Aaron's bus uh, this is a uh, bus that Aaron bought literally a week ago and uh, he doesn't have a place to park it at his house uh, so I said hey bring it out here when you come out to work on that we can work on mine I'll help you with yours you help me with mine and uh, it's a win-win situation for everybody involved uh, we took a ride in this I just posted a video uh, on a nice ride that we took down to Camping World yesterday a very nice bus um, and I, I'm uh, really excited to see uh, what he does with this over the, the next uh, couple of years. All right, have a good day. Bye.